because they didn't know how to market. They didn't know how to take the idea of open source software to the mainstream and make it persuasive to business people, to the press, to the mainstream culture. And it was about time somebody took that on. Okay, I think, sorry, Eric, but I think you have really screwed the pooch. And the reason why is, is because he says things that he'll go into later on in this video. And the things that he says don't match the reality. The reality is, is Balloon Bounce is one, you know, I don't know, maybe Mr. Balloon Bounce. Linux is not going to die because of Balloon Bounce, but everything else that goes wrong in the desktop is like Balloon Bounce. Balloon Bounce is a symptom, a symptom, an element of what the problem is. It's one thing. Okay, and so now let's listen to what he has to say, and then tell me if that reconciles with reality of what I've just done. Why do you still believe in the free and open software movement? Because I've learned from experience over the last quarter century that keeping secrets is a bad idea when you're developing software. Software that kept, that's kept secret doesn't get sufficient peer review, doesn't get sufficient scrutiny, and bugs lurk in it forever. Okay, that is just the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard, given my experience right now. Can anybody honestly say that my experience using Balloon Bounce was a less buggy experience than my experience using Balloon Bounce in Windows? And Linux was a but no, it was not. You can't blame this on Java because OpenJDK is involved. And you can't, you can't, you can't blame the Java because I'm using the same Java in Windows as I am in Linux, right? You might say, well, maybe Java has some hacks to compensate for Windows bugs, and those bugs working together make something work. And Linux isn't ready to get it because it's so pure. Well, it's a weak argument. I doubt that's the case. It's working here. It's not working in Linux. When did you first encounter this problem of people closing their source and not allowing other people to contribute? Oh, it's, it's been in place for my entire career. I mean, when I started as a programmer in 1976 or so, there was already a fairly serious problem with proprietary software. At the time... Now, there's some... The one good thing about Eric Raymond... Is, um, I only have one beef with him, and that, that is him trying to overplay the Linux hand, and him being seen as the speaker for the entire Linux community. Um, that's the beef I have, and then him overplaying his hand, making claims like, like that, and people repeat it. And then when you go to these threads where people are having, people get frustrated uh, from using Linux. They're tired, you know, they're just absolutely tired of whatever it is that ails them. And some things are solvable and some things aren't, or, or, or partially solvable. Like my camera is partially solvable. I gotta make sure I pick the pick the right mixture of of of, of audio and video, or else my, it's not gonna turn out. Um, this Java, I don't know how well it's gonna be solved at all, right? Um, I certainly can't figure it out. I've been using Linux for quite some time, it, you know, so. I even had a few tricks up my sleeve as to what commands to run to watch what processes were running while it made sound, but, you know, now I, I, I can't even get it to come up with a repeatable result. It's, it's really boggling, and, and so people go to Linux with this promise that everything's going to be great, nothing's going to be buggy. And when they get there, they find things don't work, and then they try to get help, and then they, they, they get a variety of responses that are really inappropriate for end users that are just trying to use their time wisely. And I am absolutely against these kinds of responses. Uh, one kind of response is, is that we don't want that software working in our system because it's bad for a, the environment, or it's bad for security, or this or that or the other thing, which half the time, three quarters of the time, that's just an excuse. Okay. Uh, another response could be that the users are too dumb, or, 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 or you'll see people write things like, um, when the Windows come in, users come in there, users come into the, these threads, 
And when they say they want things to just work, they're being sincere. They're, they're not lying. <laughs> they're not making that up. And the Linux users are not being sincere when they say, well, we want to know, we want to have control of our operating system and know how things work under the hood. Look, I've been doing this for eight years. I can't tell, I still can't tell you exactly what is going on under the hood to cause that, but then balloon bounce is probably the easiest way to illustrate the problem, but I, 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 I can't tell you why it's doing what it's doing and I can't come up with a solution for it. There are just too many variables <coughs> to deal with. I got into all those variables and would be, yeah, again, maybe in, in, even between the two installations of Ubuntu that I have, you know, there still may be it still may not work absolutely as smoothly and predictably as it does in Windows. Even between the two of them, even if I try to cross compare the two of them. So it's just you know, people go over there and they and they they get they get angry because they end up wasting their time and they don't their expectations are not met. Now Eric Raymond Started out in a time, I think, when um, a lot of the Unix Unix was mostly run on servers for one thing, and these people would make their their livelihood would be made by setting up Unix servers and supporting very large companies that ran their programs on Unix from their very large mainframe, and uh, the Unix is the only thing that would run on it, and so they would. And a lot of these, there's a very old. Um, email that he wrote or a guide just before he went off to use Linux about, you know, what, where, where to get deals on Unix, what drivers work, what bugs are in there, what support they provide, the whole shebang. I mean, he worked very hard on it, and I think, you know, he's, he's done a lot of good things for a lot of people, but I think in here, he's come from that world where he started out in a world where everything was just horribly, absolutely horribly buggy. Linux, the Linux that you saw, him, he even being able to play Bloom balloon bounce is a dream compared to, to the, the world that he came out of. And so, <clears throat> who knows if the guy's ever even tried Windows before. And so he thinks that, <laughs> or even a Mac, and he thinks that um, this is pretty damn good. And, and from my point of view, it's just absolutely horrible, because the bar is up here, the bar is not down there. And so, um, let's see what else he has to say. I'm, though nobody really understood that the secrecy was to blame. Uh, even uh, Richard Stallman hadn't figured that out yet. He wouldn't figure that out for another five years or so. Talking about Richard Stallman, we spoke to Richard... Okay, so let's talk about Richard Stallman. Stallman is a person that I um, admire in a lot of ways. He's a very skilled person, but when you look... At, you know, when you get a good look at the guy, you can see that he's, he's he looks a little... like he's been through the mill, you know? And he's even said in his speeches that you know, I have to make an, uh, an operating system with the source codes av available, or, or I gotta die trying. <clears throat> it became his life mission, and truly, just having a workable operating system with um, that has the the source code open to everybody has been his life mission. But the the problem comes in when he goes he and the Free Software Foundation go too far, and they say things like you shouldn't use Windows at all, even though it works right for you, and you're able to actually do your job, right? I can only run my tax program in, in Windows, but because the source code isn't open that I can't use, I shouldn't use it. I should just go in Linux and do all the tax returns by hand. Well, that's nuts. There's no way we can make money. And that's the way, that's the way it is. And so, but the difference between Raymond and Stallman is Raymond really went with this whole he thought that, like he said, that uh, if you say something like free software, that people that, that, that run the company aren't going to want to use it. They, they think it's cheap, it's broken, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. If you say open source, they, they think it's a good thing. You know, it was just a rebranding for him, but he always went with that message. He always went with the business angle, which to me logically doesn't make sense in the grand scheme of things. And the reason why it doesn't make any sense because of the end result. This is, there's no way I could, if I, if, if I wipe Windows off of every desk we had in this office and put Linux on it, we, we wouldn't be able to do 
half or a quarter of the work, or even we, we probably wouldn't be able to do as many tax returns as we do. We certainly wouldn't be able to do it at the same quality. We'd have more errors. There's just no way that we would be able to, to do what we do um, in this accounting firm with uh, just Linux. Um, <laughs> and I think some very good examples, very large, very large, complicated pieces of work that we work on uh, that the tools just aren't there in Linux. And so you really can't sell a business idea about Linux on the desktop unless it's in server space. So he, you know, he can only talk about server space. Stallman can talk about it's a basic grounded philosophy that makes sense logically from all standpoints. His be, you know, where it isn't just about business is just a ruse. To my mind, it's just a ruse. Oh, he thinks he's clever because he's got you know, Oracle to port over their database over to Linux or whatever, or he thinks he was slick because he got Netscape to open a source code. Well, still, you know, Firefox still runs pretty good. A lot of people use it. Netscape, you know, it's just, it's a modern day version of Netscape. But there's no company really running it. At least it hasn't gone downhill, but there is money behind it. And the money is supported by AOL and Time Warner and all those things, and, they, and, and eventually they're not going to fund it anymore, and over time it's going to betrot and start to break down, just like Linux. Especially when you get some of these uh, buggy-eyed guys with these bright ideas about how they're going to do the next and the neatest thing, and they get in charge of a project like Pulse Audio or Grub, and then they just trash everything else around it when they try to fit in this neat new thing with all these features, but it breaks everything else. And the problem is, is that the, the Linux is just so spread out, the developers are all over the place and um, for, desk, for the desktop, and it's not coming together in a cohesive way, and the distributions are, are so focused on making the next release in that six-month time frame that they're just not coming out with any quality products, and if they do come out with a quality product, all the software is outdated. You know, I could go out and I can buy SUSE Enterprise Desktop and I may still have problems with um, a lot of things. <laughs> okay, but it'll be SUSE Enterprise Desktop will be about two years behind in, in, in the applications, and some of the applications matter that they're, they're newer you know, they're the, the, the newer ones. Things like Grub, I don't think it really matters. <laughs> Grub 2, I don't want to see that go forward. Um, so these people probably won't have audio problems that are introduced by Pulse, but if the kernel at that time didn't have capability to um, handle the UVC video driver, you're not going to be able to just plug in your camera, uh, fire up GUVC viewer, and have it at least function at that point although requiring some fine-tuning. So, um, it's, it's a whole big mess here. I'm going to stop. Um.